Hello, and welcome to Microfluidics. My name is Christine Newbold, and I am one of the Applications Research Engineers here in the Technology Center. Today, I'm going to speak about processing on a microfluidizer to generate polymer nanoparticles. Polymer nanoparticles have gained popularity over the last several years due to their versatility and drug delivery capabilities. Formulations are comprised of a water phase and an oil phase. The water phase generally includes a surfactant such as polyvinyl alcohol or PVA, and the oil phase includes a water immiscible solvent such as dichloromethane or ethyl acetate, a polymer such as PLGA, and any other ingredients to be included in the final formulation. These other ingredients could be other actives or contrast agents. The formulation we will be processing today is a 5% weight by weight oil phase in a 95% weight by weight water phase. The oil phase is 1% PLGA in dichloromethane and the water phase is 2% PVA in deionized water. To start, the PVA must be dissolved in the deionized water. To facilitate this, the material is mixed and then heated to 80 degrees Celsius. Once the water phase appears transparent, the PVA has been dissolved and the material is then cooled back down to room temperature. While the water phase is cooling, the microfluidizer can be prepared by placing ice in the cooling tray. This will help ensure that the dichloromethane does not evaporate during processing. To prime the machine, turn the machine on and hit continue on the home page. Once the home page appears, we can add water to the reservoir and press the prime button to remove air from the system. After priming the machine, we can input our processing pressure. In this case, our processing pressure will be 10,000 psi. When the water phase has cooled down and the machine has been primed, the oil phase can be prepared by dissolving the PLGA in dichloromethane. Once the PLGA has fully dissolved, the 5% weight by weight can be added to the appropriate amount of water phase. To ensure that the DCM doesn't evaporate during pre-mixing, the sample beaker is placed in an ice bath during rotor stator mixing. Once we have a sufficient premix, we can add the sample to the LM10 reservoir and begin processing. Because we have already primed the machine, we can begin processing immediately. After several strokes, the machine is stopped and the waste beaker is replaced with a sample collection beaker. This is to allow the formulation to replace the holdup volume in the interaction chamber and the piping. This process of replacing the holdup volume within the machine will need to be repeated for each pass through the microfluidizer. For this study, samples were collected at one, two, and five passes. After collection, the samples were allowed to sit on a stir plate uncovered to allow the solvent to evaporate. This is just one of many different solvent extraction techniques. Here, both the particle size analysis data as well as the distributions can be seen for all three passes. It is also interesting to note the transparency difference between the sample collected after one pass and the sample collected after five passes. If you have any questions about creating polymer nanoparticles with a microfluidizer, please don't hesitate to contact us. Microfluidics has also released an application note about process and formulation development of polymer nanoparticles. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for your time.